Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Stevie, I think that might be my Definitely. Silence. I'm here in Boston on the 16th floor and my window is closed. Somehow I can still hear those sirens. This is worse than your Brooklyn apartment. So, uh, tell me about it. We're in downtown Boston, people. Uh, not my city nor my locale of choice. But hey, uh, even New Yorkers have to be in Boston sometimes. Indeed, and it is... You are on tour being famous and fancy and all wonderful things. So thank you. As always, yes. yes, I'm famous and fancy. Casting together. I think this might be episode 98. Are we now? We're approaching 100. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Approaching 100. What will we do then? We need to think about this. We'll see episode 6, 7, 8. So it'll be episode 8 of season mm-hmm. 1 of Strange New Worlds. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll think, think about, about what we're going to do. We'll think about it, but welcome into the program, listeners. Uh, This is Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Uh, My name is Aki Vermees, and with me, as always, uh, producer and co-host extraordinaire. Oh, me. Stevie Matz. I didn't know if if you were going to say your name, but you were producing, so it's fine. (laughs) And with me, as always... Uh, oh, I thought, uh, you were, I thought you were introducing yeah. me. I, I don't. I thought maybe, yeah. Well, oh, no, yes, this is me introducing you. you. And with me, as always. Oh, okay. <laughs> See how this gets tricky. And with me, and, and I, yeah. Stevie Manns, with me, as always, is the wonderful, uh, mm-hmm. insurmountable Mr. Aki Burmese. Oh, God, <laughs> I did the same thing you just said. I thought you were going to say uh, it. I was, uh, I was tempted. Okay, great. Today's episode is uh, Stranger Worlds Season 1, Episode 6. Lift us up where suffering cannot reach. Oh, what a high and lovely and beautiful title for uh, an episode that I'm sure will be just about, you know, happiness and, and wonder and joy, right? Uh, our in-podcast star date is star date. Four one five six six one one dot one. I don't know why I decided this is important to do before the rundown and everything, but this episode was directed by Andy Armaganian. I decided I should say who their directors okay. are. I don't know. Uh, but before we get into the rundown, we have a little business we must take care of, and that for that I'll throw to my co-host Stevie Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is like a bad double act going on. Yes, well, of course, as you may know, we have a Patreon and we would love for you to join us there at patreon.com forward slash set phasers. You can get access to all kinds of wonderful things, including the live stream of this podcast uh, straight directly to you on Patreon. You'll also get early access to the audio episodes because we clean them up and we add sound effects and very, very, very various fun things. And, of course, as well, we'll also hang out on Zoom with you. And not only that, we'll also do some watch parties of various episodes of Star Trek. So please do join us at patreon.com forward slash set phasers to have some fun with us. And fun will be had. Fun with today. flags. <laughs> oh, boy. What a deep cut. No, no, I yeah. know. Yeah, that's I familiar with it though. Let's run it down. It's time to run it down. Can you run it down for me? What just happened? Can you run it down for me? Dig it. This is episode six. All right. You know what went down in the last episode. A lot of shenanigans. Everyone had a good time hijinks as they say now the enterprise is out of space doc and they're back to their routine mission 
So it's Pike's log. It's star date 1943.7. They're in the Magellan system. He was there 10 years ago on a rescue. Mm -hmm. uh, this time, just a routine cartographic survey. I'm sure nothing exceptional is going to happen. Well, he runs into uh, uh, Cadet Uhura in the turbo lift, and she's sore from her combat training. And we find out that she's on rotation this week uh, with uh, Lieutenant Union Singh, uh, learning about security and beat people up and doing investigations and stuff. And apparently Nguyen Singh has a whole bunch of, uh, <laughs> has lessons, security lessons. And lesson number one was that uh, some sort of beast attacks all. It was, you know, just be ready to be attacked. And uh, Pike tells her to watch out for lesson number seven. Mm. Uh, they receive a distress call from a shuttle that's under attack when they get to the bridge. They hail the cruiser that's attacking the shuttle. They get no response. They order the cruiser to stand down, and it fires on the Enterprise, which uh, does negligible damage to them. It's like 0.02%. Then Ahura is at the weapons because she's on her security rotation, and so Pike instructs her to use the lowest setting to try and take out the enemy weapons without hurting their ship. The enemy vessel fires again, and as Ahura uh, fires these low-grade uh, phasers, they move directly into the range of the weapons, and they take a critical hit and fall to the planet. Meanwhile, the other vessel, the one that was originally hailing and, and was being chased, is asking for immediate evacuation. Number one, Pike, go to meet them as they transport aboard. When they transport aboard, there's a woman in front. I love how transporters always have the important person closest to the yep. screen. <laughs> and um, she turns and she sees uh, Pike in number one and she goes, Lieutenant Pike. And he goes, uh, uh Laura, uh, why? Uh, and smash to the credits so we discover uh through some stammering discussion from pike that Alora and pike met when he was there 10 years ago uh and he rescued her from a shuttle that was falling into a pulsar there has like a pulsar in the system uh and pike is a bit stammery uh una just is like listen i'll, I'll take you to a debriefing but then a man steps up and he says uh we must take this boy to sickbay first uh and when asked if he's the father of the child he says strictly in a biological mm -hmm. sense and then moves off towards six bay. What does that mean? Just you uh, know. It, strictly in a biological he's sense. Not, he doesn't care about him. Well, I thought that was a bit harsh. I'm not. Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, we all thought it was mm. harsh. <laughs> I mean, they cut to a different scene after he said it. That's how harsh yeah. it was. Uh, anyway, in a completely different uh, fatherly role, we then cut to Doctor Mbanga reading to his daughter Rukia. Uh, he's reading a chapter that he's apparently already read. Then he explains to her that, hey, uh, and also for those of us who maybe weren't paying attention a couple episodes ago, you know how you're sick and I'm keeping you in a transporter uh, so that time doesn't really pass for you. Uh, sometimes I forget where we left off in the story. And she's like, um, cool, but how long have I been in the transporter? And he's like, ooh, a while. And when she asks when she'll be transported again, in the middle of the sentence, she's transported again. And that's fortunate because just as that happens, Nurse Chapel knocks on the door, enters, and explains that they have some patients coming in who may have injuries. Meanwhile, Pike is talking to Alora alone in some room somewhere. The child is called the First Servant, and they say he's a special person, a holy figure to their people. And this is when I start to get weird feelings. Uh, chosen at birth to embody the maxim, science, service, sacrifice. Hmm. He has forsworn his own family because everyone on Majalis is his family. So Majalis, I guess, is the planetary home of the people in this part of the Majalis system. And the the they were on this ancient moon, which is an area for the first servant to conduct some sort of studies. And Alora and the gentleman who is strictly in the biological sense, the father of the first servant is called Elder Gamal, were returning the first servant to Majalis when they were attacked. And the attackers demanded that they surrender the child. And the, the attackers are from the closest inhabitable planet, who are the descendants of some long-abandoned alien colony. Uh, and the two, the Magellans and whoever these people are, have existed peacefully for years. And Laura believes maybe they were after ransom because they know that the first servant is about to ascend, to go through his ascension ritual in two days. And that's what she's meant to oversee. And they know that the... Uh, the Majalans, Majali, Maj, 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 I'm not sure what to call the people from Majalis. They're in the Majalan system. 
The plan is called Magellans. 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 Or Magellans. 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 I think I wrote, I think in my notes, it changes every few uh, paragraphs. So we'll see where I go. Anyway, uh, the Magellans are super into, yeah, Magellans, that works for me, are super into the First Servant's Ascension, and so they probably would have paid any uh, ransom. So the Enterprise wants to investigate the crash. Number one is Spock are there as they're hearing this explanation from Laura. Because there's a slight chance that some attackers survived. And Laura's like, oh, no, you don't have to investigate things. We're very private on Magellans. We don't want people to. <laughs> um, we uh, don't want to join. We, we never wanted to join the Federation, remember, <laughs> when we met? And Pike's like, hey, federal reg regulations say that if our ship gets fired on, we have to investigate. The ship fired on us three times. So he insists, and therefore Laura insists on being part of the investigation. Back in sick bay, the first servant has suffered some sort of head trauma, but it's okay. Uh, Chapel's about to use a sub, one of the fancy sub dermal scalpel or something like that, and the the uh, elder Gamal is like, get that butcher's knife away from him, and he he calls the sick bay an abattoir, uh, and he uses his own tech to check on the first servant who's who has quantum bio implants, and he says that in his clinic, healing begins on the subatomic level. Mm, mm. First servant confirms we don't have to cut people. We're not disgusting barbarous barbers like you. Uh, and he generally thinks of the Enterprise's sort of gear there in, in sickbay as rudimentary. He's a, a doctor on the planet. He was, at least, until he became the father of the first servant, and now is just basically the first servant's doctor. And uh, Mbega is interested in this, ooh, quantum bio implants. Hey, um, remember my daughter from before? Uh, he says to himself, uh, and he's like, does that stuff work on other people? And he's like, yeah, it probably would. And he's like, uh, we have no disease of any kind on Majalis. Mm. So, checking out the crash ship. It's La'an and Uhura. Uh, and Uhura's, you know, she's on a rotation. So, no life signs. Uh, they enter the ship, two of them. They look around. Uhura finds, like, a key touchpad thing, computer, and starts touching it. She's like, oh, I think. And then uh, she learns lesson number two. Uh, number three of security, uh, you don't ever touch a, let your tricorder do the sensing for you or something. You know what I should have written down as my quotable moments? The mm. Lon's rules of security. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were fun. Um, I really, they were surprisingly apt for every situation. <laughs> but uh, she basically was like, uh, you touch that, that could have blown us up. So use your tricorder. Using the tricorder, they find out that there's the ship's not going to blow up. And so Spock and Alora come on board once the way is clear. And Alora says the tech uh, in the ship is consistent with this colony of aliens uh, from the nearest planet. Uh, Spock finds something that he's like, this doesn't belong to the ship. Do you know what it is? And Alora's like, oh, I'm not sure what that is. But she picks up a coin and she goes, but I do know what this is. Flash to her holding the coin in Pike's office again. She goes, this is an oath coin. The Linearian, Linearian guards, who I assume are Majalian guards, uh, who protect the Ooh, first Majalian. servant. Majalian, good one. Majalian, is that right? Sure. Uh, sure. It sounds very steampunky to me for some reason. Uh, they are given those coins when they swear to protect the first servant, and it has been defaced. It's been xed off on the back and stuff, and so there could be a betrayer among the guards in cahoots with the alien colonists. Cahoots. So Pike wants to send Alora and the First Servant with an armed guard because he's, you know, we're worried about the danger of this, this sort of like monarch to the planet. Alora says foreign representatives are not welcome on Majalis. <laughs> but Pike says, what about a friend? <laughs> <laughs> and his hair gets higher as he says it. Do you uh, not think his hair, the the length of, or the, the height of Pike, including his hair, goes up and down throughout the episodes? Yeah, I think it changes when he's... You know, mm, I applaud it. Again. I want his high hair. You, you, you've had hair that high. <laughs> yeah. You just don't have a team of stylists to change it for you every scene to be like, That's, okay, higher, yeah. lower. But I mean, we could work that out for you. If we get enough Patreons. Listen, I said it. Yeah. I'm saying it now. If, if we, we get, get enough, enough Patreons, the first order of business is to get Stevie a a living uh, stylist and hair volumizer. Yeah, a specialist. And we will measure it. This is a ruler. 
doesn't I think it's lost all of its things. But we will then measure my mm -hmm. hair with this dachshund shaped ruler. Oh, that's very cute. That is cute, isn't it? it was a, yeah, it was I didn't see that it was because you were holding it sideways. I was like, why is what's what a weird yes, shape? But now this? I see it. So, yes. Yeah. Uh that's very cute. And you nice. call them dachshunds. Yes, they're they are. Well they're wiener think, dogs. They are also I think dachshunds. Americans call them Dax dashins or something. Like dash dashins. You know we love an H. Yeah. Well, you know, the Germans I think say Dachshorn with the Ugh. you know. Oof. Wow. Uh, scary, isn't it? No, well, sounds I mean, like it's Klingon bracing, to me. At least. It's, it's very, yes, mm -hmm. Klingon Mahajaj. Real Mahajaj. Height, um, Pike's hair. Pike's height hair. Pike's hair. Well, we were just saying, he says, What about friends? And his hair definitely looks super high when he's saying it. He's like, What's up, Alora? Uh, so they go down to Majalis. Pike is with Alora and her executive assistant. And she's like, You got this to do, and then this to do, and then that to do. And she's like, All right, great. And then Alora asks to have all the guards called in because they're going to shake the tree, as Pike says, and see what falls out. Uh, meanwhile, Spock goes to sick bay. He visits with Elder Gamal. He has a box that has that thing he found on the ship. He's like, do you know what this is? And Gamal's like, uh, no. And Spock's like, I think it's a neural dampener. It reduces brain electrical activity, and uh, it looks like it was shaped to be put on the first servant. You're purely in a biological way, son. Uh and then Spock and the First Servant talk, and the First Servant knows a lot about subspace speeds and radial polarization. I know nothing about those things. He says he's interested in it because he thought it would be fun to have a friend across the galaxy. And says he once tried making his own subspace frequencies, and he believes he could do so using parts of Dr. Mbenga's bio bed. And Spock says that would be impressive, but doesn't think the doc would love it. Uh, and Elder Gamal says, oh, the First Servant needs rest. He's got a big day tomorrow. Get out of here. Back on Majalis, Laura has all the guards renew their oaths and present their coins, and a few of them are doing okay, but then one named Kier has a damaged coin. And he says, oh no, it's nothing, <laughs> just an accident, <laughs> um, Laura. And Laura says, may I see it closer? And then we have one of those western standoff things. It's everybody's eyes, a Kier's eyes look at Laura. Laura looks at Kier, Kier looks over at Pike, Pike looks over at Kier, Kier looks down and sees Pike's uh, phaser, and he looks back up at Pike, and then he looks back at Laura, and then he makes a run for it! Uh, he runs and he turns around and he uses his uh, this is very uh, for people who don't mind uh, mixing the, the franchise it's very Stargate-y uh, he has a staff that shoots a, a laser phaser thing out of the tip of it and it uh, completely obliterates somebody and then he's running and then every, all the guards are chasing after him and the chase is on they're running through these manicured gardens and it's beautiful and then Pike is running out with the lore and it goes oh this way and takes him to some shortcut because she knows where he's going to run somehow. Uh, and so they're running and they're fighting. And he's punching. But Pike manages to tackle him, even though he's wearing a very yellow shirt. And he pulls his phaser on him. Then Alora intercedes and she says, Kier, I just want to talk. Why were you on the ship? And he says, I was on the ship to fulfill my oath and, 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 and to go against everything this floating hell stands for. And he shouts, long live the first servant. And then he pulls a knife on Alora. And then she's like, oh, shit, you think I don't know how to fight? And she's like, boom, boom, boom. Mm, knife turns around, flips him, twists him, throws him down, and then accidentally stabs him. I think. Think. Mm. Mm. Back on the ship, Uhura is eating quickly in the mask and is approached by, hey, George Kirk. And he's like, hey, what's up? Oh, you must be uh, doing rotation with La'an. Uh he says, you know what? You see Lon, you tell her you deserve a full hour. And Lon interrupts. He's like, you can tell me to his face. To my face! And Kirk's like, uh, I don't like uh, confrontation. Bye! And he runs away. Uh, Lon has a bunch of data chips in a basket from the crash flight, which she obtained, uh, we won't say illegally, we'll say uh, off the record. Um, she has yet to declare it. Uh, but because she's done so without going through all the Enterprise, uh, the Federation red tape, she can't use the ship's translator to decipher it. So she asks Uhura to do it, you know, manually. And Uhura's like, all right, well, I'm a genius, so I'll do it. Back in sick bay, Benga is blown away when he sees how the quantum implants have cured the head trauma of the first servant. He asks Elder Gamal if they could perhaps use this cure on somebody, you know, an 11 year old, perhaps with advanced case of sigmachemia. Uh, and Gamal says, oh, yes, on my planet, it would be irreversible. Absolutely. But it is illegal for Majalians to share their technology with unaffiliated races, <laughs> same as the Federation. And then the doc goes, well, I mean, not with medical intervention. And the other says, uh, well, maybe one day. I don't know. <laughs> but 
They are overheard by the first servant who appears to be sleeping, but is not. Meanwhile, Pike and Alora are on Majalis. Alora is fine, but concerned. She says she knew Kier for years and worried that there's no one she can trust. And that's when she puts the moves on Pike. She's like, yeah, there's no one I can trust on the planet, but what about a friend? And Pike's hair grew four inches that day. And they kissy kissy. And then they kissy kissy again. And then they do something more than kissy kissy. Cut to them in bed laughing. Ha 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 We have so much fun. Uh... And Pike's and like, Pike, my goodness, some muscles on him. He is very muscular. It's true. Listen, who, he's, who he's, knew he was that muscular? I mean, even I was like, oh, hello, Captain Pike. Hello, hello, Captain Pike. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, Mo love. crush alert. Excuse which is unusual me, for Captain me. Pike. He is very, he's like, but it's not like gross writ. It's like very, it's, he just, he's, yeah, hey, man, Anson Mount is uh whew, he's got high hair and he's cut <laughs> oh yeah i've been feeling, feeling the captain Pike, baby. Baby. <laughs> i've been on this enterprise mission for so long if you feel uh, if okay, you were so... in brooklyn you could do that if I was in Brooklyn, I could turn to my keyboard and immediately start singing the Let's Get It On Pike and Allure edition. Yes. Things I miss about having just having a keyboard. Uh, Pike confesses that when he first met her 10 years ago, uh, he may have been hitting on her. And uh, he was, and she's like, you sure were. And he's like, oh, we both thought it was unlikely that we would meet again. I was a lieutenant. You were doing your thing in that pulsar. And uh, Allure's like, well, it is rare to know one's future. And Pike's like, huh, well... But sometimes we get a glimpse. And he explains the situation where he knows how he's going to die and that uh, he's going to get, he's going to be horribly, horribly wounded. And even all of the Federation technology is not going to be able to save him. And Alora says, well, Majalian doctors are capable of incredible things, but uh, one has to be one of them in order to achieve, to, to, to receive those medical benefits uh, and devote themselves to the code. Uh, uh, the 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 what is it the their their motto uh, science service sacrifice three s's uh, Uhura calls for Laan on the ship says she's found the needle in the haystack from all the data cards Laan looks it over and says well, we should present this to the captain Benga returns to sick bay to hear Rukia's laughter he's got food on a plate he walks into his room with the privacy windows up and he finds the first servant playing with her and there he's made hot scotch out of inert gases or whatever and the first servant's like oh I overheard you talking about signochemia and I didn't see anybody with signochemia in sick bay and so I started looking at all the hiding places I would look in and I found Rukia uh, the doctor puts his daughter back under, tells the first servant he can't tell anyone about Rukia. Uh, and just as that happens, they're interrupted by the suspicious elder, uh, Jamal, uh, Lamal, uh, I didn't write down his name. Elder, angry dad guy. The biological father guy. Gamal? Yeah. Yeah. I said the biological, the biological father, father guy. father. First servant says, uh, oh, hey, uh, no, hey, dad, no, I was just looking for a midnight snack. And elder Gamal's like, it's time to go. Uh, Pike gets back on the bridge. Uh, uh, to find out the Hura's findings. And remember, he's just come from Kissy Kissy Extra Extra with uh, uh, Alora, And he's sort of like, why am I being called to the ship? I was having a great time. Uh, <laughs> Uhura's evidence points to some issues uh, with the language and finds out, she finds out that this alien colony is not an alien colony. It's actually an offshoot of Majalis. <laughs> Well, surely Allura has a, a reasonable explanation for this. Uh, why did they lie to us? Uh, just as that's happening, and they find that out, the elder and the first servant are on the transporter pad, so Pike runs down to the transporter room. The elder demands to go. He says he doesn't think the Enterprise can protect the first servant. Pike says, hey, we should talk. But then, then they transport out uh, by other means, and Pike yells at the chief. He's like, oh, who told you to do that transport? And Kyle's like, ah, I didn't do it. Somebody transported them off. Uh, and Pike's like, get them back and contact somebody. And they manage to get the elder back, but not the first servant, just as number one also finds that there's another combat cruiser floating nearby. Red alert! Red alert! Yeah. Ooh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is my job. <laughs> Sit and hit buttons. Red alert. I feel like yeah. a horror. Boop. Uh, okay. 
the cruiser attempts to get away. The Enterprise deploys a tractor beam. The ship tries to go to warp anyway, and then everything gets all wonky because you're holding things. They're trying to go into a transdimensional space. Uh, before the Enterprise can release the tractor beam, the shearing causes the ship to explode. No, I don't have any explosions. Oh, well, that was Damn a pretty it. good sound for it. Though. We added the explosion at the end. That was that was the warp. That was a warp whoosh. I'll find an okay. explosion. Well, the ship explodes. Oh, that's pretty good. Foley, yeah. Okay. Uh, with the first servant still on it. You're still trying to pull <laughs> Really trying to perfect that explosion sound. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Pike calls Alora. This is a sad part. <laughs> And he says, oh, it's a tragedy. The first servant died, uh, and she's just absolutely distraught. He says, if the first servant doesn't ascend, Majalis will fall out of the sky, and the surface of our world is nothing more than lava and volcanoes. And Pike says, how can that be on the shoulders of a single child? And she breaks off the comm instead of answering. Pike then turns to his people. He says, how did the combat cruiser, how were they able to beam the child off the ship in Uhura? Uh... D- Detective Uhura Holmes is like, um, I have a theory. They go into the ready room. Uh, it's Uhura, Laan, Pike, and Elder Gamal. And uh, Uhura explains like, hey, in order for someone to have beamed someone off the ship, even though our shields were down, you would need a full bio scan of that person to be able to make a transport lock on them. And Elder Gamal's like, oh, whatever. Yeah, so whatever. I, yeah, we had that in sick bay. She's like, but you did one just before you left. And he's like, uh, I had a right to the first servant. I'm his doctor. And then she's like, but you also did one of yourself, Gamal Jacques. Uh, and he goes, uh, and he seems very guilty. Pike asks, what is the elder not telling them? But as he does that, Spock interrupts saying he needs to see Pike on deck 17 for something very important. So he has Laan escort Elder Gamal to the brig. Meanwhile, Pike has been monitoring a subspace frequency created earlier that day by... The first servant. And it is sending a distress call. And it ain't coming from where the combat cruiser was, ladies and gentlemen. It's coming from somewhere on deck 17. And as they find it, they find a container. And inside is none other than the first servant. Uh, and he says, he's got to get to his ascension immediately. He's got to go right away. Uh, it's time. And the first servant beams down with Pike. Pike confronts Allura with this evidence that he has. And Allura's like, uh, bleh, bleh. Okay, uh, just, uh, so you're welcome to the ascension ceremony. Uh, it's hard to explain, uh, but you've been invited even though you're an outsider. Uh, I want you to see this, and so does the first servant. Uh, also, Allura is cagey about how the first servant keeps the city afloat. We know things are going bad now. Number one confronts uh, Elder Gamal on the ship. And Gamal says he tampered with his and, and uh, uh, with the transporters and stuff for his own child's safety. He's not just biologically the kid's father. He's his dad. So... Uh, he says the neural dampener was all part of the protection plan for the first servant. Uh, so the first servant would not be able to perform their duties. And uh, when he learns that the first servant is back on the plan for the ceremony, he says, you might as well put me in the jail then. Cause I failed to save my son. And uh, Una Chin Riley says from what flash to the planet. Pike is watching and everyone's celebrating their film. They're dressed and uh, Laura has like gold chains on her head or whatever. Oh, it's a happy day. And the first servant is waving. And everyone's like, we love you, first servant. You're the best. And the Enterprise is unable to contact the captain or beam down to him because of some sort of interference being put up by the Majalans. Majaliamans. Uh, Pike is invited to enter the Ascension Chamber, which outsiders are never allowed to do. Uh, and the first servant is going through the oaths. And and Allura's like, do you promise to do this? I promise to do that? Put everything before you? And then as they see that, he stammers upon seeing the body of the previous first servant going out on a litter, desiccated body, uh, face disfigured, uh, mummified and wrapped in blankets. Uh, and Pike realizes what's going on and he tries to stop them, but the guards prevent him and he fights but the first servant is placed onto the throne and he's punching the guards and he almost gets to him and then he gets knocked out by a third guard and we see, uh, the first servant sits down and then a bunch of wires come out of the machine, like, tiny matrix style wires and they connect to his face very boy yeah totally and then uh, his face goes blank uh 
and Pike is uh, passes out. He wakes up in Alora's chambers. She is there, but the exit is blocked by guards. Which Alora sends the guards away, and she's like, "Listen, Pike, you can go too, but I hope you'll stay." He says, uh, uh, yeah, I'm getting out of here for sure. I'm going to go get that kid out of that machine. And Laura says, oh, severing from the machine now would only kill the child. And Pike's like, but why? Why do you do this? And Laura says, well, yeah, we don't know. The machine is what keeps uh, uh, Laura alive. And, you know, our ancestors built this machine and it needs the neural pathways of a child to function. That's how the founders made it. We don't know why and we don't know what it's going to do. They've looked for alternatives, and that's what Alora was doing when they ran into each other ten years ago outside of the Pulsar. And Pike asks, will the child suffer? And Alora says, oh, yes. Uh, only, she says, we don't pretend that they're, they're not suffering. We live in gratitude for his sacrifice. And Pike's, Pike says, what, whole, what civilization uh, would pride itself on being based on the suffering of a child. And Alora counters with, well, uh, you're saying children don't suffer in the Federation? At least at Majalis, we don't look away from suffering. And Pike says, he will report it to Starfleet. And she's like, fine, whatever, we're not in the Federation. And he's like, you know what, I'm out of here. Boom! Opens up his thing, he's like, get me out of here, number one. Uh, in the end, Elder Gamal comes back to Sikbay to speak to Dr. Mbenga. Uh, he says, oh, hey, yeah, I'm going to be taken to that colony and uh, become one of the people that resist this uh, barbaric use of children to keep a city floating in the air when we have space. Whatever. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, he's going to work with them and try to save the next first servant. He has to see the file of this signochemia patient to help uh, the doctor understand the theory behind the Majalian um uh bio quantum hacky thingy majigs uh and so they begin to look at that and the final scene is pike drinking alone in his chambers watching the pulsing of the pulsar star and here endeth the end of episode six of season one of star trek strange new worlds entitled lift us where suffering cannot reach let's chat about that i say darling Let's do a quick chat about that. Yes, 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 yes. let's do it. Let me take a quick sip of my Dunkin' Donuts. Mm -hmm. This uh, podcast is but not But if Dunkin' sponsored Donuts, Donuts does want to sponsor this podcast, we would be delighted. Hey, Dunkin' Donuts, you want us to build your bridge to Star Trek? Let's do this. A starship uh, could run on it. runs on it, right? Uh, okay. Just saying. <laughs> uh... uh well, okay, I'll say this to start. I saw the whole plot coming. Like, as soon as there was, like, the kid and the guy and and Allura was cagey about, oh, the first serve and sacrifice. Yep. I was like, oh, something weird with the kid uh, that Pike is not going to like in the end. Uh, but it was still super compelling. This was, like, very classic Star Trek. And it had elements of both TNG like and of, TOS. Like, very heavily. Yes, yeah. And, like, yeah, where you're like, oh, uh, okay, I see what the issue is. Like, I can kind of tell what the issue is. But you're still like, I got to see how this gets resolved. They had enough interesting, uh, like, pulled in these B and C plot lines that were pretty great. I loved that they're, they had this running trend of Ahura doing rotations. And she's kind of, like, always killing it in her various rotations. Like, she helped Hammer a couple episodes ago. And then she has this, like, Dr. Doc, uh, Sherlock mm -hmm. Holmes moment in this episode uh where she embodies the spirit of the seventh uh lesson of security yeah. no i mean arguably terms. uhura is gonna be the breakout star of this entire series and it's it's around i think it's around uhura's bridge to hmm, the bridge uhura's journey yeah, bridge to, to the bridge tos really because we know that pike isn't there we kind of know we know spock his origin stories that have been covered a little bit in disco so i think this is really paying tribute to nichelle nichols I love it. I'm all yeah. for it. And I also I think it's it's one of the better characters to use mm. because she is a cadet here and and moving through all the different sort of like things of the ship. You know, oh, she went down to she was also unlocked the thing, the the thing on that that weird planet machine, uh the 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 alive machine that saved that planet or whatever. Uh so like we get to see her in all these various situations which allows us to see various parts of the ship but also see how great Uhura, you know, how Uhura like comes to the decision to join Starfleet. And I suspect that they're peppering in George Kirk for a reason as well. 
there'll be some bridge there between her and Kirk and James Kirk. Sam Kirk. Ah, did I say George Kirk? You did. I think I said that before, too. I mean Sam. Okay, I missed that. Sorry. Who's George Um, Kirk? No idea. James George Kirk? Kirk. I met a met somebody named George yesterday. (laughs) Wouldn't it be fun, though, if Nichelle Nichols gets to make some sort of cameo? I wouldn't be surprised if that happens in one of the final episodes. But we, I don't know. They've not hinted towards it. Wait, how would she make a cameo? How not? As someone else, she wouldn't necessarily play herself. Okay. Or maybe she could. Maybe it could be a sort of future thing. Who knows? I don't know. Um, But I, (laughs) it's just that. I was just like, well, but should be a horror's future self? I mean, it could happen. Who knows? You never know. I did love how this felt very much like a return to the days where these Star Trek episodes, both TOS and TNG, were mirrors to the present. You know, and it's a metaphor for it could be a metaphor for a number of things, whether it's fossil fuels or clearly child labor. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I, th- I, I enjoy the like those episodes. TNG did such a great job of that, and they really expanded on that idea. Right. Uh, this also, some people related it to that, that, uh, that episode with the guy that the doctor who's like, I'm turning 60 and I've got to die, you know? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm forgetting, but it's the one where uh, Luwaksana wants to marry him. Yeah. And he's like, you're what a lovely woman. And then he thinks about running away because he's a brilliant person. He can save his planet. Because they're doing something with the sun, but then his, his kids come and they're like, you're going to embarrass us if you don't go through the ritual. And she's like, you're going to die. And he's like, I've got to. And it's so sad. Uh, very, anyway, yes, agreed. Yeah, they, they are shining a light and holding up a mirror to uh, society today, mm-hmm. which I think is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else uh, that I found remarkable no this was like pretty straight this is so this is the issue with these episodes like they're really wonderful to watch there's a little bit of character development but really i guess we get to see pike you know with his shirt off but also like that he has some history around the place uh other than the the one episode we know from tos where he the people with the big heads uh so that was great I... Hello, ladies and gentlemen, here at Set Phasers. The name's Occupy Reese, and we're going directly to Stevie Baz at the Easter Egg Desk. Stevie, how are you doing today? Well, hi there, Aki. Good to be here as always. How are you doing today? I'm just fine. I hear you got some Easter eggs for us. I've always got some Easter eggs for you, Aki, and it's always a pleasure, always a pleasure. So, here down, well, I don't know why I'm doing an American accent, here down at the uh, set of Strange New World, we have a ton of Easter eggs for you from Pike's uniform. Now, this is something quite minor, but mm. it hints to a couple of things here. So, Alora mentions that Pike's uniform is very yellow, and he corrects her by saying it's gold. Small Easter yeah. egg references two things. First, the actual color of Kirk's uniform in the original series was closer to green, but in the mm-hmm. first season, yes. it didn't show up that way on camera. Second, in the DS9 episode, Trials and Tribulations, oh, Cisco, I know, Cisco mentions that the 23rd century command wore gold. Alora also comments that Pike is wearing yellow, which could mean either that when they met 10 years ago in 2249, and we figured out these dates because we do, um, that in 2249, most of the crew of, uh, sorry, where was I? Well, I lost my place there. Um, could mean that in 2249, Pike was either wearing a different division color, implying yeah. that he was in red or something, or yeah. that in 2249, most of the crew of the Enterprise, and we assumed that he would have been under uh, Captain Robert uh, April. You're right, right, right. Mm-hmm. They could all have been rocking the all blue disco era uniform. So mm. possible, possible. And this is, you know, some some canon about uniforms. Um, but it does feel more likely that they would all be wearing the disco blue uniforms rather than the modified TOS uniforms we see later in Discovery and that they're wearing now. So that's just a little bit of fun canon if you want to get nerdy about stuff. Oh yeah, tell us. We also we because. And there's and they have the blue 
the not quite as good blue jumpsuits in uh, Enterprise. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. The really good point. bulky, ugly ones. Yeah. Yeah, with the little colored shoulder panels yeah. or Oof. whatever it was. Oof. I know. So ugly. Yeah. Um, we also find out in this episode that Klingon ships have a scuttle system. Are you familiar with that mm. term? Uh, scuttle. To scuttle? I'm familiar with mm -hmm. the concepts of scuttling. I f know the term, but I'm not entirely familiar. But well, so Laan tells. Oh, yeah, please. Oh, La'an tells Ahura that some Klingon ships have a scuttle system, which is a naval term referring to destroying a sinking ship on purpose. The idea that the Klingons would rather have their ship destroyed than be captured completely checks out with their honor system. Uh huh. And also, no die with honor. Military. Yes, Klingon stuff. Maktashaj. Maktashaj. Um, let's let's move on. Uh, we have a little amusing moment where Sam Kirk. Uh, says that he's conflict diverse, which is just hilarious given yes. James Kirk. And Pike's flying tackle was very Kirkian. And uh, when he tries to stop the rogue guard, he uses a flying rugby Full slash football style rugby, tackle. Yes. Yeah, um, which was famously used in both Space Seed and the Gamesters of Triskelion. Wonderful. And uh, yeah, so some fun facts. So, Anki, okay, that is everything here from Fun Facts. It's back to you in the studio. Fantastic. Great to hear from you. Let's go directly to... Oh, I think there's some news. Oh, yes, there is some news. Please hold. News around the galaxy. Love a bit of news. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of headlines for us. Paramount UK launch date is the 22nd of June, and it should include... The full seasons of Prodigy, Discovery, and the first three episodes, not the full suite of Strange New Worlds, and then I assume they will come out weekly. Star Trek London wait, originally planned. Wait, 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 hold on. Well, 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 well. Say again. Well, 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 well. What, what, what's, uh oh, that's in, uh, in Paramount London. UK. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, scared me. So okay, they are well. launching in summer. It was supposed to be spring, but it is now going to be June 22nd. So, our UK friends, it is coming. It is coming to you. Star Trek London, originally planned for September, has been cancelled. Oh no. It's big news, well, why? yes. Well, the organizer said that rather than having Star Trek London and Destination Star Trek in Germany, they've decided mm. to cancel London, which was planned for September. So that's quite it's quite a late cancellation, really, given yeah. how much planning goes into these things. Um, and they've decided to focus on just one big European event, which mm, I'm sad about because it sort of suggests they don't have that much faith in the franchise, which I think sucks. Well, I know that they do, but they don't have faith in the franchise in Europe. I don't know. I was disappointed. Well, I'm sure it's it not could true. be because they screwed up the could be the the rollout so much uh, internationally. Mm. Fair point, and they haven't had know. time to really drum that up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, uh, UK fans, fear not. Um, there will be a Star Trek tribute at Comic Con on the eighth to the 10th of, I believe it's July, where many of the planned guests from um, uh, Star Trek London will actually appear. So, if you haven't got tickets to Comic-Con already, go get them. It's not, it's not far off. Terry Metalis teases Picard Season 3's new villain on Twitter. He's quite a Twitter fan, this one. Ooh, this is where okay. all of our teasing teasing things come from. Tweet, teasing tweets. Tweet, tweety, te te never mind. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Uh, Tweezers, indeed. Tweezers. Um, he said so season three will feature quite possibly one of the all-time great Star Trek villain performances that we've seen to date. He said he has confirmed that it is not Jeffrey Coombs. Somebody asked him that question and he okay. replied directly and said no. So you will, f And he also said you will find nods to the more nautical cat and mouse submarine movie elements of the early Trek films, which is interesting because a couple of episodes ago in Strange New Worlds, they paid tribute to that. So perhaps we can look forward to seeing something a bit more like that. And finally, finally, this is fun. And I'm actually going to ask you to accompany me if you are free, which I probably assume you're not given the Let timing. Let me pull up my diary. Yes. Uh, September 4th. I free am not free. We... <laughs> I didn't I think you would be. You don't even need to look. That's yes. Labor well, Day or something. Uh, it's not. It's the weekend of Labor Day, but yes. No, right. no, it's the one before. It's the one before. I don't know. Well, anyway, 
Fathom Events are doing screenings for the 40th anniversary of the Wrath of Khan on the <laughs> big screen. Khan! <laughs> um, so you can find somewhere in your area by going to fathomevents.com to find your local screening. And I am so excited. And I was going to book tickets and then thought, I don't know if my wife would come with me. So if anyone is in the uh, upstate Hudson Valley area, and want to do a meetup? Well, that, that'll be fun. Where is um, it gonna? Do you yeah, know where it's gonna to, be in uh, Hudson Valley? Well, there's only so in my for my um, postcode. What do you call it? Zip code. The near the only. Well, I think the nearest slash only one was Poughkeepsie. Poughkeepsie okay. Regal Cinemas or sure. something like okay, that. Cool. Um, so yes, yeah, if anyone wants to come That's with me, Poughkeepsie. Be so I'm sick. Dang. I'm gonna be. I yeah. mean, it sounds cool, but it's actually yeah. very sad. I'm gonna be on Martha's Vineyard. Where I, I don't think there's going to be a showing of Wrath of God on Martha's Vineyard the weekend of Labor Day. <laughs> that I can do. You could do your own. You could have a sad, sad screening by yeah, yourself. Yeah, I'll be watching it on my computer alone in my room. Yes. Come well, anyway. On. on that note, that's all from the news. We didn't do any quotable moments. Uh, we, I will, quotable moments. we don't have a ton of quotable have moments. I figured. I mean, Should I don't even. It? We could do quotable moments. I only have oh, one. Well. All right. Quotable moments. I listen. Hit me with we it. We all liked your new your uniform is very dot 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 yellow. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and I guess I also enjoyed uh, <clears throat> that the tree that grows from the roots of sacrifice lift us where suffering cannot reach. <laughs> and cause children to suffer so that the rest of us can have a good time. Suffers. Okay. That's all I had. Did you have any quotes from here? And, you know? <laughs> I didn't. I, I was too busy doing other I things. I realize now that um, I should have. They're not like great as quotes, but as a collection, the lessons, the La'an's lessons about security would be a great. Sort mm. of, you should write. We should go through oh, it again and write Rest them down assured, I will. Like publish I it just as a post. Have done it, yes, know. I know. Huh. Send it to me and we'll post it in the Patreon. Patreon.com for this. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, great. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> um, let's go to next time. Next time on Set Phasers. Oh, did you think that I looked up the name of the next episode? I didn't. Uh, so, but next time we're going to be talking you. about. I can't talk at time at the same time. Can you Google it? Sorry, yeah, of course. Seven, the Serene episode. Squall. The what? Squall, a serene squall, like a squall. Oh, a squall. serene squall. Oh, which is an oxymoron. oxymoron. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Next week we'll be talking about episode seven of Strange New Worlds, uh, entitled "Serene Squall." Think about that for a while, but then you plan and smoke it. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you've enjoyed the program, uh, please get more of our programs. We're we are wherever you get your podcasts. We have all these back order, back order. They're not back, but they're back episodes uh, where we talk about all of Star Trek Discovery, all of Star Trek Picard. Uh, we got some watch alongs up there. It's really great stuff, and we will continue to put out episodes about whatever is new in the Trek world every Monday ish. Uh, especially when I'm on tour, uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah. Uh, we are also on socials. We are on Instagram and Facebook, at Set Phasers and at Set Phasers Podcast, respectively. Do go follow us along for, for fun facts, and possibly we might post short reels of the news clips, because they're fun. Uh, if I ha- if, uh, if I'm... Fun. Yeah, if I have time, quite honestly, because it's quite a lot of work. Um, yes. Yeah, I need an assistant. If anyone, if anyone wants that, jobs open and All it's right. yours. So, yeah, step number two. So, first, we get your hairstylist, and then, second, yep. you need a personal assistant. Yep. And if they can do both, oof, we're talking. You know, I feel like people who have high hair, like uh, like Conan O'Brien, you know, he's got an assistant. I'm That's sure true. they make sure his hair is high. I think he earns a lot more money than I do, and then we do. Well, I'm just saying, when there we get we this, when we really get this Patreon popping. Let's get, yeah, Hard okay, yes, yeah, Stewie's, Stewie's working on their hair right now, and ooh, left it not in the best state. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. 
No, it's it's listen, it's a statement now. But I think uh, this is this is more akin to coneheads. Do you remember that? that I was thinking, yeah, it has a bit of a with the poof. I you got the yeah. You would you go. have it yeah, it's got the swoop is nice. Yeah. We're working yeah I, on it. I like this straight up, but it feels like it needs to be a thing. I don't know exactly how that I was it seems very like yesterday. Oh wild. Oh uh, yeah, hang on. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll uh, have uh, some fun okay. with hair. But uh yeah. I was I was playing well, it yesterday. Well, speaking, speaking of fun with hair, <laughs> this is a purely audio uh, yeah, uh, oops, medium. I just, I just unless that. you join our Patreon and then you can see the video of Stevie messing with their hair for the last four minutes. <laughs> this is like see, this is what it's like for me when you dance. Right. I understand. I understand. My bad. Uh, now I fully understand <laughs> what it's like when I am distracting on my end. Yeah, we have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash setphasers. And if you want to see what Stevie's hair looks like every episode, uh, mm-hmm. and also what bow tie I'm wearing, you can join up there to get visual, to get video, uh, to see, to, to, beep, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> to see... Woo! The episode, the coffee finally kicked in. Hello. Uh, to see the episodes as well as hear them, uh, as well as join us in various watch alongs and uh, uh, Zoom meetup parties that we have with our Patreon uh, subscribers. Indeed. Well, I think that's all from us here at the Set Phases. I am yes. Stevie Manns. And I am Aki Burmese, strictly in a biological sense. <laughs> and this has been Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Computer. End program. Mm-hmm.